We're about to touch on the Bupak Shakur debacle that led to him losing his life while trying to catch predators. Now, the Bupak Shakur debacle brought forth a conversation a lot of us have been having with our friends, which is how ethical are these vigilante videos, like First Amendment audit or the Catch a Predator videos? And should the intent be weighed in when trying to figure out how ethical these videos are? If they're catching predators and exposing who the pedos are in the community, then should we care that they're exposing pedos for their own self-profit gain and their thirst for fame? The perfect example of this is the First Amendment auditor dudes, where they go around provoking people. Hey, hey, don't, don't take a picture of me. I already did. No, hey, Will. Tell them to stop taking pictures of me, man. Will. Hey, y'all tell them to stop taking pictures of me? I don't know why. It's okay. <laughs> What happened? Dude, what are you doing? I'm just working oh, on a video. Hey, man. Can you start taking pictures of me while I'm over Come here. What's, up? What's your name and batch number? They beta interaction by sticking a camera in somebody's face, hoping they call the police and freak out on them. And when the police get there, they record the entire shit show and publish it on YouTube and other platforms and profit from it. And they disguise their intent for notoriety and fame and income with we want to protect the First Amendment and alert the police and government officials that people can record in public spaces if they want. Officer Officer Bass, can you explain to these folks right here that we have the freedom to video record in a public place? Oh, you just can't record the screening process, but you can record anywhere else you want. Oh, I can, re oh, I can record the screening process. You can't record the screening process. Have you, have you read the policies from TSA? Have you? Of course. Show it to me where you... Where well, yeah, you can, I'm sure you can find them, sir. Okay. Now, I'm sure if you corner these dudes and say, yo, explain why what you're doing is noble. They could probably give you some reasoning such as, yo, we're holding the police accountable and making sure they know the laws that they're enforcing. I guess, right? But they're all doing it for profit and it's for self-gain. It's not noble at all. And the Catch a Predator videos are actually worse. I'm serious. They're 100% worse. More times than not, the creators behind these The Catch a Predator videos are often just as bad as the predators they're catching. Shall we remind you guys of the Chad Goldstein scandal? Which is illegal. Okay, so I'll be honest about the decoy picks. So one of the... So one of the decoy picks, the Hispanic boy that we use, that's my cameraman's little cousin. And the white decoy that we use, he's 17. And yeah, I met him on PS4, we're playing Madden together. And he said he was down to do it. So yeah, that's where I get the decoy pictures from. Latin guy, the kid? He is 16. So you have two minors that you use as decoys. That goes in a minute to retrieving scandalous photos from actual minors hoarding them, and then using those scandalous photos to bait in actual pedos. That right there is completely unethical, no matter how you want to shape and twist this. On top of the methods most of these dudes use being sus at best, their investigations are often sloppy, and they often accuse the wrong person of being a pedo. All right, well, basically, can I see your phone? Do you mind if I see your phone? Do you have Meet Me app on your phone? A Meet Me app? No. Yeah. Can you show me that, please? Show you what? You, you don't have Meet Me on your phone. I don't think so. Uh, you can't show me you have Meet Me? You're trying to delete it, but I screen record everything, bud. What? Do you have Meet Me on your phone? Be honest. Meet Me? Yeah. No. The app. <laughs> text the decoy phone right now. I'm going to text his, his phone. His, text his thing. What is this? What's this about? Just can you text the uh, Mimi? Can no you go to the app? Time for this shit? Like, what's this about? Listen, can you just show me the app and you go to no, your app? I don't have to show you. That is my app. I mean, I I can call the cops if that's what, are you what I need to do. What you call the cops for? Because I have the whole chat log. So do you want to just show me me and we could talk about this? Meet me what? Well, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm going to detox right now. Head off. You don't drive, right? Hell no. No. That's what I'm saying. That can't my be. You don't drive. Destroyed. <laughs> it's like three weeks. And out of all the bad to catch a predator dudes, I don't think anybody was quite worse than Bupak Shakur. See, Bupak was somebody who went to extreme measures in catching predators, to say the least. A good predator catcher, but like he's really like the Batman of this shit. Like, nigga, I know you going home with some busted ass tires. Mm -hmm. We ain't even talked about that yet. I know. Like, I you thought, going I thought, home, yeah, you got to explain this to somebody, bro. He said Don't a three piece. I'm, I'm thinking yeah. somebody's going to get hit, hit yeah, three yeah, times. I, I, I I see, so I, hey, I seen him make a motherfucker call his mama. Every confrontation Bupak have with predators will be extremely violent. He will slash their tires. Foul, cuz. Let me see this phone, too. You a pedophile, dude. Step out the car. You want me to call the cops?
gas or are you here for to no, pick no, up no, a little no, girl no, for no, sex? Where are you going? Check. Well, get out and go get some gas. Why are you leaving? What's up, pedophile? Who you coming to meet? Who you coming to meet? Let me holler at you, cuz. What you here for? What's up? You a pedophile, G. You here to pick up a little girl, ain't you? Yes, you are. Look at this. You ain't going nowhere, motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah, bitch ass dick. Break they car windows. Oh man. That's a pedophile's car. Coming to pick up a little girl, right? Bro knew no limits. He was even putting hands and paws on these dudes he was catching in his predator sting. Regardless of if you feel sympathy or not for these predators being attacked or their property and car being damaged, the one thing we can all agree on is what he was doing was completely irresponsible and dangerous. Like, you don't know the type of people you are inviting into your space. All right, so if you're inviting somebody to corner them for a predator sting and you put them on the attack, that could end very wrong, bro. It's super easy to fall into the trap of if they're coming to meet a kid, if they are a predator, then usually they're a dweeb, a weirdo, or a mark. But some people, if they're forced into a situation where they have to flight or fight, some is going to fight. Now, outside of the extreme measures that Bupak will go through, people also had an issue with Bupak adding his cash app at the end of each video, trying to monetize and profit and self-gain from this, right? They couldn't figure out if he was doing this, you know, just to be a vigilante, just to be somebody who wanted to clean up his community, or if he was doing this for profit and for notoriety. And something that also rubbed people the wrong way was when Bupak was offering to teach people how to catch predators as well for a fee of $100. But regardless of how much Bupak actually profited from catching predators, at the end of the day, when looking back on things, none of that was actually worth it. That's because on September 29th, 2023, when Bupak left his residence that evening, unknowingly, that will be his last to catch a predator sting. Robert Lee, known as Bupak Shakur, was shot and killed at Universal Coney Island in Pontiac last night. Lee had a large social media following and would pose as young girls online, then record confrontations with sexual predators whom he communicated with. Robert Lee, a.k.a. Bupak Shakur, made it his mission to expose child predators. Last night, he was killed right here inside this Coney Island. Tonight, people gathered around it to pay their respects. Lee was fatally shot inside Universal Coney Island near North Perry and MLK Boulevard late Friday night. Oakland County Sheriff Michael Bouchard says Lee confronted two men who were inside the restaurant. He even accused one of the men of being a pedophile. The confrontation escalated very quickly and ultimately the second individual in the booth produced a uh, firearm and shot him uh, multiple times. Police have arrested the two suspects involved in Lee's shooting. They haven't released their names because they haven't been formally charged yet. Here's the crazy part. They detained two people, but one person got sent home while the other person was formally charged. And the two people they arrested were both teenagers. One was 18 and one was 17. The 18-year-old, Omero Diaz Gomez, he was actually officially charged. What's even crazier, apparently the 18-year-old who shot and killed Bupak had another interaction with Bupak earlier the previous year when he maced Bupak when Bupak confronted him in a predator sting. Apparently, he was 17 years old at the time, which to me is... Now, okay, it, it may be weird that an 18-year-old is talking to a 15-year-old girl online, but I don't think 18 years old finding a 15-year-old girl attractive, I don't think you're a pedophile. And I damn sure don't think you're a pedophile if you are a 17-year-old boy finding a 15-year-old girl attractive. So I don't know if Bupak thought they were a different age or if Bupak thought they were in their 20s. But these were teenagers. These were kids that he confronted about being pedophiles. Now, here's the thing. We've seen Bupak Shakur other things. We've seen this man slice tires, slap people, and break car windows. And I told y'all, some people are going to fight back. They're not fleeing. And those teenagers decided to fight back because they felt as if they did nothing wrong and they were being attacked and provoked. And when Bupak pulled up with the same old attitude, with the same old shtick, got super aggressive and hostile, 
they fought back and that ended in one of them shooting and killing Bupak Shakur. This is leading to a lot of think pieces online where people are actively debating as to, yo, who's in the right here and who's in the wrong? Even if we say these teenagers were in their 20s, if you come up on somebody and damn near attack them, slashing their tires, breaking their car window, and they shoot and kill you, even if they were real pedos, I still don't think they will be in the wrong for shooting and killing somebody who attacks them and walk up to them that aggressive, especially a complete and utter stranger. But y'all let me know. What do you guys think? All right. Uh, is Bupak deaf justified? Was he in the wrong? Was his methods of catching predators was just wrong? Y'all let me know, man. Feel me? You know, it's a tricky situation. I don't know how to call it. I want to be sensitive towards somebody actually dying. But it's hard to just look over this man's history and his methods. All right. Y'all let me know, man. But why you guys are here, man, click on this video somewhere on my screen to find out why Lil Tay needs to go to jail. Yes, that Lil Tay who y'all thought was dead. Click on this video to find out why she needs to go to jail, right? I'm going to see you guys in this video. Um, out of here, folks. Peace.